Welcome to Family of Christ. My name is Pastor Brent, and on behalf of this community of faith, well, we welcome you to worship with us today. Especially any guests or visitors, all are welcome, and everybody is somebody here. As we continue our journey to understand who Jesus is and grow our hope by experiencing the light of God come to us in our Savior, we continue with Jesus' first message based on love. Now, most of us have heard that, that First Corinthians text that is part of today's love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And all those are amazing words because they are for us. But Jesus' first uh, sermon also reminds us that uh, they get a little tougher when we recognize that they're for others too. Well, let us worship God, the God of love and light and hope together recognize that message is for all of us. message of love your son brings is hard for us to hear. Make us bold not only to listen to his words of power, but to also proclaim them where they need to be received, in grace and in love. Amen.
Hi, everybody. Today we have a great part of the Bible that we get to read. It's called the love chapter and it's found in the book of Corinthians. And it gives this beautiful description of what love is. So today's word is love. And here's the description that it gives. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Wow. That's a beautiful description of what love is. That's a lot to take in. And when I was younger, somebody told me once that a good test to see how you are at loving is to replace the word love with your own name. So I would say, Amy is patient, Amy is kind, Amy is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Amy does not insist on her own way. Amy is not irritable or resentful. Amy does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Amy bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. <gasps> I'm not very good at loving. That's really hard to do all of that. I don't love perfectly. I mess up a lot. And so I started thinking that maybe it's not to replace the word love with my name. Maybe it's to replace the word love with God's name. So then I can say, God is patient. Yeah. God is kind. Mm -hmm. God is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. God does not insist on his own way. God is not irritable or resentful. God bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. God does, because God's love is perfect. God's love is so much more than how I am able to love. And so I can know that God loves me like that. God loves me with patience and kindness. So while I might not be able to love other people exactly like this, God living in me and working through me can. So I can ask God, help me to love my brother because I've lost my patience today. Help me to be kind to my friend because they keep breaking my stuff. Help me to hope because a lot of people have been sick lately and it's hard to be hopeful. And God will help us to do those things. God will help us to love when we can't. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being patient and kind and good. Help us to love. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel for today is from Luke chapter 4, beginning with the 16th verse. Jesus went to Nazareth where there had been he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. 
The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said? And then Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do you do here in your hometown what you we have heard that you did in Capernaum? Truly I tell you, he continued, No prophet is accepted in his own hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not seen sent to any one of them, but to an outsider, a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed either, only Naaman the Syrian. <laughs> At this point, all the people in the synagogue, synagogue were furious when they heard this. So they got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the top of a hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But Jesus managed to walk right through the crowd and went on his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love is patient. Love is kind. Oh, I like these weeks when I get an easy text, especially when it's compared with a tough story that's in the gospel today. <laughs> right? I mean, who wants the end of the story to be that the people try and throw you off a cliff? But this week... Something in that first encounter with Jesus, well, it's been a brain worm in me and it's caused me a little sleeplessness. So I'm thinking maybe that that's the spirit trying to push me into this tough text. So we'll leave the love for the wedding season and look at what we've been given in front of us for today. And well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, as I fell exhausted into my chair Friday night to watch some brainless TV, I realized something that I was tired. I'm exhausted. I mean, some of that may have been physical, right? Because there was a lot of shoveling last week and this cold weather just bears down eventually on you. But much of that tiredness is also not just physical, but emotional. This COVID has gone on way too long. And, and these last few years haven't been that good on my waistline or my health or even my mental health as I struggle to be with people and in relationships I so need and, and everything just seems to be in, in upheaval all the time. We even seem to be on the, the edge of war again, and the news just seems to weigh heavier and heavier on our communities. I have been waiting for a long time for hope. I don't know about you. So I like these words in our readings for today, but I can't also forget that they almost lead to Jesus' death. God's hope is both embraced and as well is rejected by those around him. Now, words of hope are, are important in the scriptures and in Jesus' ministry. And as we continue our journey into this time after Epiphany, we get Jesus' first teacher, teaching, or his first sermon, if you will. And actually, it's the first thing he says at all in Luke's Gospel. I mean, he'd just come back from the wilderness where he'd been tempted by Satan for 40 days, and he returns to his hometown, and, and there he enters into the temple, where he chose to read these words from the prophet Isaiah, from the Old Testament, if you will. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. This scripture, he then says, as, as he hands it back to the, the guy, for fulfilled in your hearing. And, and as he hands it back and then he sits down, it's like, boom, it's like this great mic drop. It's so perfect. This is happening now. And the eyes of the, all those that were in the synagogue are fixed on him. And I'm sure everyone's like, whoa, wait, what just happened? This is Joseph's son, Jesus. We know him. This is amazing. Now, it all sounds pretty good, right? Maybe a tall order, but good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery to those that are broken, freedom to the oppressed, and God's favor for all people. <laughs> he repeats a promise that has actually been with uh, the, the Israelites for a long time, since it all started. And this is good news for the people of Nazareth, the small town in Israel that's pretty tough shape right now, right? They're, they're poor without much, not much food and shelter. They're struggling under Roman occupation. They're dealing with medical ailments, including blindness. And, well, they're in need of some good news and some hope. They've been waiting for a long time. And now Jesus says, here it is. I'm here. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes it's hard for us to necessarily connect with some of these texts, right? Because in Lakeville, we may not be struggling with the traditional understanding of poverty or captivity, blindness, and being oppressed. But, 
But as the story continues, we see Jesus's promises aren't just used to describe the physical nature of our condition. Because the same good news, this release, this healing, this freedom, and God's blessing is also for the other struggles that we'll face. I mean, think about it. What does it mean to be poor? It means to be lacking at a basic level for good survival. Yep, that can be about food and clothing and shelter, but it can also be about those that lack significance or, or purpose in their lives. Lacking relationships of trust and love or anything that we truly need. And if we're honest, most of us have something that we're lacking that we're missing. Or, or, or being captive, right? There may not be an occupying force or we're not in jail, but we can be captive to other things. There are many things that, that hold on to us and not allow us to move. Things that, that keep us from loving and living as we are loved. It could be as culturally as large as a pandemic, but it also could be the struggles of things like addiction and mental health and broken relationships. Or, or, or being blind. I mean, even though most of us can see, we are blind sometimes to the brokenness in our lives and maybe even blind to the brokenness in the world around us. And some of that is because we're just simply afraid to engage the truth. So we close our eyes to see uh, to what needs to be changed or dealt with. We even understand oppression, right? Where we're also held back by the choices. Maybe it's because we've made or, or others have made in this world around us. We have this fear about changing our lives. And, 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 and we also can be held back because of things like the color of our skin or our gender or the labels that are forced upon us in a world that, well, those really are unfair. But it's into this poverty, into this captivity, into this blindness and oppression, even into the brokenness of our lives, or in the brokenness of the world around us, that Jesus begins proclaiming life and hope for all of us. This is his first message, right? This is his first message. This will be the, the message of his entirety of his ministry, this message of his life, and it will eventually lead to his death on that cross but it'll also lead to the resurrection from dead that will give this grace and life to everyone. It's stronger than even that. And that's the good news, my friends, right? That this first step in this journey of faith and life with our Savior Jesus is that God is with us. Is, is that those things that we don't have enough of that hold on to us, that, that block our vision forward and keep us from becoming who we're supposed to be, Jesus says, I'm going to step in and I'm going to change those things. We need this. And he doesn't say this is going to come at some future time. No, Jesus says, today this starts. Today I bring you love. Today I bring you grace. Today I give you hope. Wow. I think we could just end it there, right? The text did last week, right? This could have just ended up there. and Like the first Corinthians, the happy, sappy love stuff. But then Jesus has to push it a little bit. And I think God is good at pushing it a little bit, just like he does today. Jesus says, and, and I, he says that love, grace, and hope aren't just for you. He says, they're all for you. I got it. You got it, right? But they're for everybody. And for a while, that's okay, right? I get Jesus. We got it. You came for us as individuals, us as a community. We're in this with you, right? But in not so many words, I think Jesus is saying, yeah, I don't think you do get it. In fact, I, 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 it's going to be harder for you to get it sometimes because, well, because you, you do know me. I have come to love you, yes, but I have come to love everybody. And I mean everybody, especially those in real need. Those who don't look like you, those who don't act like you, those you've made from a whole different culture. And the changes I make, Jesus says, will upset this world including your world, so that everyone can know my love and grace. It will bring change. And as much as we may long for and call for transformation in our lives, for more of this and less of that, when we get down to it, it's also a little scary. Because God's grace and God's love and God's hope will upset the systems we are part of. It will mean change. It will mean challenging our own narrow thinking sometimes. It, it means that we will have to be vulnerable. It means that we need to step into the unknown and trust in something besides ourselves. And it scares us. 
even when it means a better future for all people. In fact, this message of love and grace was so much that Jesus' own town folk rejected at the end. So much so they didn't even try and kill him by throwing him off a cliff. And a whole nation will eventually try and stop it on a cross. Because God's grace and love, as, as amazing as they are, well, they will change us. And we can often find ourselves just as bound to reject them because it means deep change for us too. But God's gift of, of, of hope and grace won't be stopped. And we can choose either to stay stuck into this poverty and captivity and blindness or oppression, or we can join in bringing hope and new life to all people. You know, grace and hope, love and peace, all of those don't seem like mighty disturbing concepts, but they really are. And as scared as we sometimes are to embrace them, we know that we live when we live into them, at our core, it will change the world. The waiting is over, Jesus says. The time now is for a new beginning. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. God's grace and love and hope are for you. This was the key to Jesus' ministry. And this is the key to our lives today, too. That we who have a God that comes to us today, bringing with him everything that we need, and inviting us into the scariest thing ever, to embrace this love and grace and see changes in our lives and in the world. <laughs> May the peace and hope that pass all understanding be with you now and always. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those around you in your home or text someone you know and wish them peace. This is something we can share every day. As we continue our worship, we walk into the time when we share our gifts through the offering and regular tithes and things like our noisy offering. I want to thank you for your generosity in all of this. Your blessings continue to help us move forward as a community, and we invite you to continue sharing your gifts. This month, our noisy offering will support Feed My Starving Children. 
Like all nonprofits during this time of pandemic, Feed My Starving Children has faced drastic challenges from economics to logistics with modified options to have volunteers packing boxes of food. They have struggled to meet the demand for nutritious life-giving meals for God's children around the world. We at Family of Christ have had a rich partnership with Feed My Starving Children in the past, and so we will stand by them this month, blessing them with our giving so they can bless children in need. Join me in donating online or by sending a check to Family of Christ. Please share your offerings of blessing with Family of Christ by sending them to the church or going online. Thank you for sharing your blessings, and we thank you for your generosity. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. Your word is not always easy to hear, O oh Lord. Train our ears to hear the words our spirits need for growth and assure us that your commands are the very essence of compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us strength to speak truth to the world that is based in your love so that we might grow your kingdom and add to your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we are tempted to think ourselves insignificant or ill-equipped for the tasks you have given us, touch us with your spirit and empower us to wake up to the gifts we possess. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Refuge for the weary and rock of the faltering. Show us your mercy. Show your mercy to those who require a special measure of your grace and healing this day. Be especially with all those struggling in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In awe, we look to the saints who have modeled stewardship, service, and faith for us. And we humbly ask that you make us examples of hope and action for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. Receive these prayers which we offer and hear the pleas of our hearts which we cannot even put in words. For the sake of your world and for your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh, blessed family of Christ. We're hoping for a lot today, aren't we? We, we put our hopes and our dreams and our lives into Jesus' hands, and he promises that our, our Lord promises good news, release, recovery, and life out of his great love for us. And this love, though, well, it isn't just for us. It's for all people. And sometimes it's a hard part of this journey, especially when we, God invites us into joining others in, in, in this love invites us to go out into the world and, and, and share this love for so many that need to hear it. Yet that's what God does. He loves us and continues to call us into loving all people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of the Lord shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh,
its treasure store.